to you by Cheese It as we welcome in our friend Stanford Steve. Stanford Steve. You know why they call him that, obviously. Because he went to Cal. <laughs> okay, so, so we have something for you guys. We have something for you guys. Steve, as you're here, obviously you're very familiar yeah. with this place. What is your best memory here? Well, first of all, I am biased when it comes to Cal fans in Memorial <laughs> Stadium. Because every time I played here, it was sold out. Right. It's a great atmosphere. They do a great job. Their fans are awesome. But I also am undefeated here, too, so I can walk around anywhere uh, in this place. Wow. But they, 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 they are awesome. They will be awesome today, tonight, I don't think they and they got to be the, the fury. I don't, think they, I don't think they heard that. Did you guys hear what he said? He said, <laughs> Sanford Steve said he's undefeated here at Cal. <laughs> that axe never came across this bay when I was there. <laughs> okay, let's talk a little bit about the Heisman because my quarterback is currently mm. <laughs> in, these, in these Heisman fa one of these Heisman favorites. And when you look at this list of guys, we're going to pull it up now. When you look at this list of guys, obviously Jalen Milrow leading the pack, what stands out to you? Ashton Genty. Yep. Just what he's been able to do uh, at a clip that I've never seen before. You know, and it's not like he has played against bad competition. He goes to Eugene and runs all over him. Eugene, you know, Oregon had to fight for that game. And then Travis Hunter, can he keep up this pace? The, it's it's not, nothing we've ever seen. He's run the most routes of any wide receiver in the country. And also he has all the picks to go with it. So can they sustain that? I thought that was the best game they played under Deion Sanders last year in their win against UCF. They're on the bye week. They got Kansas State. I think that's their biggest game on the schedule. You know, it's right around a touchdown. Uh, they're an underdog still. So can they withstand that? We'll see. What I, what I love about Aston Genty, two games already this season, over 250 yards. He has a six-touchdown game and also a four-touchdown game. Why is he so damn it, uh, dynamic and poses a, a, a threat to the defense? I look at his balance. His balance is incredible. He takes hits behind the line of scrimmage. He takes hits down the field. But also his vision, uh, what, what he's done and how he sees things, whether it's that outside run or zone, whether it's the pin and pull. I mean, look at that. He's hurtling dudes yeah. in the open field in, in mid-stride. He's just, I think he's super special, the best running back in, in this class, and I expect big things from moving forward. I mean, look, you can't get a clean shot on him and his ability to carry. The one, the long run he had against Washington State last week, he leaped with a guy on him from the six-yard line. Every guy we watch, even on Sundays, either the elbow goes down, the knee goes down, not yes, him. He's right. that strong. Steve, I'm curious from your perspective. Obviously, the year Devontae Smith won the Heisman to follow me here, we had to do a lot of work to get to, hey, like, this brother deserves this award, right, because he's a wide receiver. You've got a guy like Travis Hunter who's playing on both sides of the football. They might not win a ton of games. Yep. We know that that obviously comes into a factor. And then at, somehow at this point, people are still asking if Ashton Jensen should be in New York at some point. If he keeps up, I feel like that's a no-brainer. Do you feel like what we've got going on right here is going to sort of help us continue to get to a place where we are voting for the Heisman Trophy in a way that it is more it in the spirit of what it should be, which is the best player in college football? Well, that's my problem. I've always called it the worst voted on trophy in sport. Yeah. Because it's just turned into a quarterback on the best team, right. and they get all the primetime games. When you look at Travis Hunter, you look at Ashton Genty, they have a chance because they're going to be in primetime. Genty's got to be, I know you know, be lost last night, but they got a Friday night game. They go to Vegas. That's going to be national TV. And then Hunter... Alone the way Colorado gets covered, they are going to be in the mix no matter what he does. And they, they both have the wow factor. The wow factor is what you need. I, I think the term Heisman moment is so lazy because these, both these guys have 20 of them already this year. So don't talk about the Heisman moment. Talk about how what they do week in and week out. Travis Hunter, I mentioned the most routes of any wide receiver. He plays the most snaps of anybody, but he also plays the hardest yeah. on those snaps. Yeah. That's what I love about him, and that's why he's a pleasure to watch. I want to ask you about Miami's quarterback, Cam Ward. Yep. In every game this season, over 300 yards passing and at least three touchdowns passing as well. What are his chances right now as you look at him getting ready to play the Cow Bears? Well, they have the train that is the U. You know, I, I, people want to say the U is bad, whatever. They have that already built in. And now they started the season undefeated. They got, you know, they got their scare last week. That's why I'm really interested to see how they come out tonight. He was careless with the football, but if you know Cam Ward, he, that's what he does. Yeah. He's a playmaker. He doesn't have great ball security, whether he's in the pocket or he's running out. 
But when you look at Miami, the totality of the team, they're going to get blitzed tonight. And I'm not talking about linebackers coming. I'm talking about the crowd, the energy. Their offense has to withstand the buzz and that fury early on. And they have the capability. The one thing I will say about Cam Ward in this matchup is Wilcox has played against him, coached against him twice, one and one. They sacked him seven times in two games and forced six turnovers. The problem is Cam Ward's offensive line at Miami is a hell of a lot better yeah. than it was at Washington State. So Miami's got it. That's, that's my key for Cal. The defensive line has to hang in there against Miami and what they bring. They're so balanced. Restrepo, Arroyo, Martinez hasn't really gotten loose to what we saw him do at Oregon State. So I expect the Cal defense to play great, keep a minute. Can their offense make enough plays? Because when they went to Auburn, they didn't play their A game, but they won. But they also took a lot of hits on Mendoza. That's not going to be the, 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 the recipe tonight. It's, it just can't be it. So they, they got to be better and play. And they got to play their A game to win. You mentioned Martinez. He's obviously, you mentioned he was at Oregon State. He's obviously played here as well. Chris Wall has coached here. But I want to talk about Jalen Milrow really fast because obviously he moved up to the Heisman favorite after what he did last week against Georgia. What has impressed you the most about his play? His improvement in throwing the football, I think he'll be the first person that'll say he could be better in the second half is Jalen. I thought he tried to force things too much last week and that's what got him in trouble. He didn't play to the down and distance with a big lead. You have to change your style when you have that big of a lead and you play that well in the first half. So that they're very interesting today. How do they come out? It's an Alabama road game in Nashville. What do they do? Their, their explosiveness is what's so scary and you saw them jump Georgia with that the fourth and one here where he just takes it. Uh, I, I, I really want to see his mentality today because past Jalen would try and force things today to get out to a lead. Just play. You got playmakers all over the place. Yeah. Let, 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 let your players play. Yeah, for sure. I want to mention uh, a guy that we've seen. He's only 17 years old. Yes. Is he? I Ryan, want to make a point here. Ryan Williams. Okay. Can I make a point? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. He's 17. Obviously, we all love him. Body control, ball skills. But if you go before he made the catch and then before that, George takes the lead. Georgia takes the lead because he fumbled the kickoff. So, like, I, it's that close. So, you talk about, oh, that game was that close to Georgia winning. Ryan, Ryan Williams has been unbelievable. But he's not He's not a saint. All right? He's gonna. He's, he's still – everybody loves saying he's 17. I don't know if we're going to see him again as a kick returner. But I just wanted to – it was that close. And that credit to him for coming back. I can't imagine what was going on in his head, knowing what the lead they had and all that. So, when when he, when he has it going, it's, it's, it's as good as anybody. But just watching the tape back, I'm like, wow, it was that close to Georgia winning this. And then he would have been the GOAT in the bad way we talk about GOATs. <laughs> so I don't want any of that. Okay, so as we mentioned at the top of you coming here, you're used to the cow crowd. Yeah, it's, but did you expect it's them to show up like this? Did you expect yeah, them to show up like this? I did. I told you, they're 100%. awesome. They're awesome. Wow, it's great. It's amazing. What Reese and Herbie are doing, but they're doing something on SportsCenter right now uh, that looks a little wild. Okay, well, it's great seeing you, Steve. Enjoy if you're your time goodbye here. To me, I guess and that's right because I can't yeah. hear a thing. <laughs> no worries at all. Great.